down. If you know where we're at in the week, you know, over the weekend, Sunday into Monday, we had a really strong push up. You see that right here. Monday, not a lot of movement. A little bit of bullish movement kind of off the 50 EMA here. You had one, two, three hits to uh, to the 50 and it popped, but that pop didn't last. It ended up dropping from 58,600 down to about 56,000. So kind of retracing that entire move. Over, and that was yesterday. And then overnight yesterday, it kind of sat very, very quiet on this 800 EMA, which is the dark blue line right in here. I've got a couple other indicators on here that we really don't need for Bitcoin. So I can turn off that ADR and I can also turn off if I double click this, turn off the Asian range because it's just not important really for Bitcoin. So now looking at it like this, you can see very clearly there is a bottom set in here at 56,800. It can't break it once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. It really hits that zone. And that's what led me to having a bullish bias this morning was seeing the strong support here. Plus fundamentally, if you look Yes, this hasn't really moved a lot this week, but overall, even since Sunday, the pops are more bullish. The pullbacks here, as you can see, like that one two nights ago and even last night, they take a little bit longer, but the pop, there is bullish pops in this. So that's why, you know, fundamentally, I still have that bullish bias. But more importantly, technically, you can see there is a support level here at 56,800. Once we got the short-term shift, we call it the short-term cross up where the 8 and 21 EMAs crossed up, that's just where I felt that we could see this thing continue to rise from. Now, I have this pennant formation drawn here on Bitcoin. This is the 15-minute chart, and I don't love drawing diagonal trend lines like this. To me, pennants are not really solid patterns we should look to trade. However, if you can find horizontal levels like this, instead of drawing them with just one line, what I like to do is I'll use what we call in ASFX the two-candle rule. I'll take the pin where the two candles to the left and the two candles to the right, the pins are not lower. Price does not go lower, and that would be this pin right here. And I'll extend that box a little bit back and then forward. And that's my support zone that I would be looking to trade off of. No matter what diagonal line you draw on top, that just really doesn't matter to me because, again, the bias is still very bullish. So once you had that 8 and 21 EMA cross up, plus it broke through the 50 EMA here at that same time, if you look, right in here. That's kind of what I thought. Okay, now that we've hit this support zone so many times, maybe we hold this shift up and we see a short-term pop. And that's what we've had so far. So this has now been a bullish move from 57,000 right up to 58,000 pretty quickly. Now, my take profit here, my idea of where take profit would be, would be the next structure point back here, right? That's kind of where I'm looking. However, now that we've broken past that Asian range high, if you did have one, I mean, whether you call it an Asian range high or you're just looking where prices slowed down, now that we've broken there, I would expect maybe some type of a retest before a move up, something like that. I wouldn't expect it to just shoot towards this next structure point, but you never know. With Bitcoin, sometimes it gets super volatile and it can do that. So that's what I was looking at most uh, this morning, and that's kind of the bias and the direction that I felt Bitcoin could move. Looking at the NASDAQ, going into the open, futures are all green. So naturally, we've seen these things move up overnight. That's where futures will be priced in from. These indices are really cool because it's kind of like trading futures overnight. If you do want to trade uh, US markets overnight, you can just come trade these indices with whatever broker you want. Every other broker is offering this shit nowadays. Hold on, we got some questions. If the EMAs are in full trend at the time of entry, but before that they could have been better, does that still get a knock? Think about how much time have they not been in full trend. If majority of the day before the entry, they are in good trend, then that'd be okay. But if they're not, then I would knock that, yes. Even though the L50 is in the sell zone, Luis is talking about on Bitcoin, yes. So that's again, just knowing what I know about Bitcoin, it's a different asset than Forex. It does not respect these indicators the same. Market sentiment is sitting in the sell zone here today, but if I just turn off this TDI and just trade price action, you guys can all see the shelf and you can see the 8 and 21 cross, and that's the shift that I like to trade. I wouldn't necessarily be looking to short the down shifts or even buy an overextended breakout like that where this is the biggest bar of the day. This is a nice shift because it goes with the fundamental bias, it comes off the technical level, and it's not an overextended reach like the first shift up was overnight there about three in the morning. So just an idea here, Luis, it's not an ASFX entry. That's why it's not labeled that way. It's just using my knowledge and my experience to identify a risk reward setup. Kenneth, good morning. Rodolfo, good morning, bro. For Bitcoin, the triangle pattern you drew is more of a bearish pattern. And consider how the L50 is in the sell zone. I thought the overall bias was bearish. Absolutely. That could be the argument. So what he's saying is if you draw the diagonal line, this can look like a bearish pattern because you have the support here, right? And normally this will break to the downside and then retest and move lower. For sure, that's why I don't draw wedges. 
this is a wedge to me, a triangle. I don't draw patterns like this. Peter Brandt is the market wizard who I kind of learned a lot of this from just through his Twitter feed and reading the books that he's been uh, interviewed with. So what he says is horizontal levels are much more significant than vertical or than diagonal levels. Um, so that's why he doesn't even bother drawing these diagonal lines for the most part. And to the point uh, uh, that this is a bearish pattern, even if that's the case, once it breaks out to the upside, the bearish pattern is disqualified. And now you would think that this should move higher. So yes, the L50 is bearish today, but you have to keep Bitcoin separate from Forex, everybody. Please don't try to trade it like a Forex pair. It's fundamentally driven by the sentiment on Twitter and the sentiment of people that are just getting into Bitcoin. Overall, Bitcoin is still in a bull market. So to me, anytime that we get buying signals or significant levels to buy it off of, I'm going to be interested in seeing how high or what type of volatility, what type of uh, velocity that move could present. I hope that that makes sense. But back to the indices, like I said, nothing so far today. It's really tough for me to trade them when they're not in trend like this. I'll turn the Asian range back on just so we can see that as we go into the Forex pairs. For me, just with the EMAs like this, I don't have a good read on it. Now we're going to watch the stock market open today. I mean, look at the NASDAQ, look at the US 30, look at the S&P. They're all very tight with the EMAs, not in full trend. So are they going to continue lower? I mean, if you look at the daily, definitely not bullish on US 30, more bullish on the NASDAQ. And US, uh, the S&P 500 is kind of in between. They're all at great buying levels if you're in a bull market. You know what I mean? You're almost at the 200 EMA on US 30. You're at the 21 EMA on the NASDAQ. And you're at the 50 EMA on the US 500. So it's definitely an important time to keep everything in focus here. Is US 30 a leading indicator of the other indices? I don't want to say so. I'm not sure. It could be. This already has the 8 and 21 shift down on the daily time frame. These other two have not yet. Maybe they will. Or maybe the NASDAQ holds this strong shift because tech stocks are doing really well and this can continue to move up. So it's really tough to say. I mean, I saw a tweet today. It was like the Black Wednesday crash is going to be the worst crash the world has ever seen, like talking about today. And I just don't think that that's going to happen. So we'll keep an eye on the market. You know, if there's some volume and there's some craziness going on, that's where some people are finding money making opportunities. So we'll see. Morning, bro. NASDAQ bullish. Yep. Over.